Yeah. Analytics off the chain, all the channels not the same. Jake and Kyle, you know the name. Headline nation, we running the game. Yo, what is going on, Headliner Nation? Welcome back into the Fantasy Headliners. And like I do every week, I am back with my rankings for the wide receiver and tight end positions. Now, we figured something out for you, Headliner Nation. A lot of you have been asking, how do you become a member of the exclusive Headliner Nation and join our membership here on YouTube? And for those of you on iPhones, the join button hasn't been showing up, but we've got you covered. If you want to become a member here on YouTube, if you scroll down in the description of this video, right below the timestamps, you click on the link that says become a member, it's gonna take you to the membership page. And from there, you can become a member and join the exclusive content here for only $4.99 a month. Exclusive videos throughout the week. A members only live stream on Sunday mornings where we give away an autographed piece of memorabilia every single week. You get some sweet emojis and you get a badge next to your name as well. So everyone in the comments knows you're one of the cool kids, all right? So, hey, if you can, we're almost to 500 members here on YouTube. We're hoping to break that here in the next week. If you can, if you're willing and able, join and become a member today. But the rankings video, it is time. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm doing something a little different this week, all right? So when I do my start and sit videos, obviously the goal is 10 points, right? That is where our accuracy rating comes in. If someone's over or under 10 points, that is the cutoff for where we list them as starters sit. So when I talk about players on the, on the start and sit episode, I'm really talking about their floor, right? If I think their floor is under 10 points, I'm probably not going to list them as a start. So instead of talking about that in kind of the same way with my rankings, I'm going to do what I do with my preseason rankings. And I explained this in one of our shows earlier in the offseason that how Jake and I do our preseason rankings a little bit differently is he kind of ranks players based on where he would draft them. I rank players based on where I think their upside is. And that's what I want to do with my rankings this week. I'm going to rank everybody based on where I think their upside is. So then when you watch my start and sit video and you see, man, Kyle's really kind of down on this guy. He's got him as a sit. And then you look at my rankings and you're like, well, Kyle's got him actually a little bit higher. He probably thinks the ceiling is right here. Maybe I should start him over somebody because he has a little bit of a higher ceiling. And I hope that maybe helps with some of the questions that I've been getting about kind of my thought process. And I also hope it helps with some of those start and sit questions out there that you may have throughout the week. So let me know in the comments down below if you like this format as I go through it and what you think about it. If I should continue to do it, if I should go back to the old way, let me know what you're thinking. All right, it's time. Let's get into it. We are going to be talking about our wide receiver rankings first, the top 50. Let's get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, number one, Devontae Adams. Like we're going to continue to keep Devontae Adams here on a weekly basis at number one overall. It's hard not to. I mean, he's the guy in this passing offense, right? Uh, and they're a little bit banged up now, and we're going to talk about that, talk about that more, but that secondary for uh, for Green Bay is having some issues right now. Cooper Cup going up against Seattle on Thursday night. We're going to expect him to get back on track this week. Justin Jefferson should absolutely eat against a depleted defense for the Detroit Lions. I mean, just ex I'm expecting a big game this week from him. Debo Samuel at number four. Trey Lance, I think Trey Lance is really going to cling to Debo Samuel this week. He is going to be the main target. We've seen him be the main target already in basically every game so far this season. Arizona obviously has, has been a tougher team, right? They shut down the Cooper Cup, right? They shut down Cooper Cup this past week, and they kind of play the same role in this offense. But I'm expecting, I mean, even though maybe I think his floor is a little bit lower because he's the guy and he's been playing so well, we have that ceiling a lot higher as well. Tyreek Hill, you know, normally I'd have him up one, two, three, but it is against Buffalo. But I mean, come on, let's face it. The guy is absolutely going right now. Coming off a huge week last week, Tyler Lockett going up against the Rams and Tyler Lockett, you know, 
a boom or bust, right? The guy's putting up 30-something points or 3-something points. So Tyler Lockett, especially with DK Metcalf getting Jalen Ramsey, which, again, we'll talk about in a second because I got something for all of you. I mean, he's got if he's the guy this week in the target, he's going to be the highest. Terry McLaurin against New Orleans coming off a big week. Another great opportunity for him here. DJ Moore at number eight. He's the guy in this offense getting tons of looks, getting tons of targets. Can he find the end zone? That's kind of where that ceiling reaches. Stefan Diggs, I would like the ceiling to be higher, but this is kind of where it's at right now because of how many guys are getting targets right now. This is really where Stefan Diggs falls into. Adam Thielen, again, Detroit, depleted secondary. Thielen in the red zone. He's the guy. We're going back to him. Jamar Chase at number 11 this week. Jair Alexander is banged up, okay? He's going to miss some time with an injury. He's the number one. I mean, he's the guy in the secondary that has really kind of kept things even keel for the Green Bay Packers. And now they're going to be missing him, and they've had trouble in the secondaries with guys outside of Alexander. Oh, man. Jamar Chase, his ceiling is through the roof right now. C.D. Lamb at number 12. We got to hope that he gets back on track this week, and I do expect him to do that. Going up against New York, uh, again, kind of a quick passing game if we're going to get back to that. Um, working out of the slot hopefully a little bit more this week. Let's get him there. Mike Evans going up against Miami. He's the touchdown guy, the touchdown upside in this offense. Calvin Ridley all the way down to number 14 for me this week. It's a Sunday game, Sunday morning game, early game in London. In London, you hate Hate, hate to see that for teams. Uh, Calvin Ridley, it's just the ceiling hasn't been there for him lately. DeAndre Hopkins, the ceiling's been a lot lower for him. It's San Francisco, uh, who's been tough at times this season. But with DeAndre Hopkins, I've got him right here because, again, targets are going everywhere. And I want I got to wonder if that rib is still bothering him a little bit. Mike Williams at number 16 against Cleveland. Cleveland is tough against the pass. I talked about it in the start-sit video on how little... I thought I could get from this matchup this week. Deontay Johnson, even though this offense has not been playing well, he's the main target. Big Ben's still looking his way quite a bit. Amari Cooper is probably going to see the majority of the cornerback one coverage in the offense this week. Right about here is where I think, because I think this is a really, really good matchup for Dalton Schultz, and Schultz is going to be uh, getting a nice amount of targets. And I think we try to get Tony Pollard some more targets this week as well. Keenan Allen, again, only at 19 right here. He might see a lot of targets, but Cleveland has been really good against uh, opponents opposing defenses so far, or excuse me, opposing wide receivers so far. DK Metcalf at number 20. I, I talked about it. He's a sit for me this week, right? Right about this 20th, 20-ish area is where I kind of see his ceiling at. Because let's say he does score a touchdown. That's about six points right there. I still see the volume overall down. Like, his ceiling for me is maybe three or four catches for 30 to 40 yards. Maybe he finds the end zone. This is kind of my ceiling for him right now. A lot of you responded to me and said, Kyle, DK Metcalf tore up Jalen Ramsey in the playoffs. No, he did not. In the playoffs last season, when DK Metcalf went off, Jalen Ramsey only covered him on six of those targets, and he caught three of them for 30 yards. The rest of his yards and his two touchdowns came in coverage against other players. So if Jalen Ramsey is on DK Metcalf, that is now three games in a row where Jalen Ramsey has allowed, I believe it's five catches in three games for about 40 yards. That's over the course of three games. So for those of you that had a comment about that, I went and looked, and that's the data for you, okay? You are not correct about him lighting up Jalen Ramsey. He didn't do it to Ramsey. All right, moving on. Chris Godwin going up against Miami. Part of the issue with his ceiling this week is, does Tampa Bay bury Miami and do it quickly? Marquise Brown at number 22 going up against Indianapolis. I've got his ceiling a little bit higher. Uh, I've got a ceiling much higher than last week, obviously. But kind of the question is, too, is, is the ceiling limited at all? Because is Bateman back this week? I haven't heard yet. Marvin Jones at number 23. Uh, this is Tennessee. Probably his ceiling's even a little bit higher than this. But, again, are they going to be running the ball quite a bit with James Robinson? They'll be giving him a ton of touches, which is great. Absolutely love it that Urban Meyer figured it out. Uh, Jacoby Myers at number 24. 
His ceiling would be a lot higher, but again, does New England get up on Houston quick? And Jacoby Myers just uh, is allergic to the end zone. He's never scored a he's never scored a touchdown in his career. Jalen Waddle at number twenty five. I expect Miami to be throwing it quite a bit. Jalen Waddle's got a little bit more oomph to his game uh, than what Devontae Parker does, and that's why I've got him a little bit higher. Brandon Cooks, his ceiling's right about here for me. Don't love the matchup. Yes, he's going to get a lot of targets, but is he going to turn those into big gains and touchdowns? If that doesn't happen, then Cooks doesn't have the type of ceiling that you see come with that type of volume. Antonio Brown, the same thing as Godwin. Are they going to get out quick? Are they going to bury Miami? If they do, are they going to throw it a whole lot? Cortland Sutton going up against Pittsburgh. Uh, you know, again, ceiling here could be a little bit higher. It's kind of right in these range. Uh, I mean, he could go even a little bit as high as maybe like 21 this week. I don't expect huge games. I don't expect huge games uh, because I think at some point Denver is going to be running the ball quite a bit. It's going to be defense and running for Denver. Kenny Galladay at number 29 going up against Dallas. I think he's going to see Diggs. I think Diggs is going to end up being on him. If that happens, Kenny Galladay could be in a tough situation this week. OBJ at number 30 because he may end up being the number one target on this team and has more big playability. Remember, I've got him as a sit compared to Rashard Higgins, but Odell Beckham Jr. has bigger play potential than what Rashard Higgins does. And that's why I've got him at 30 and I don't have Higgins in here because I think the ceiling, even though Higgins is going to be safer, that ceiling is a little bit higher for OBJ. Devonta Smith at number 31. Don't love the Carolina matchup, but again, the number one in this offense. Corey Davis would like to have him a lot higher, but again, it's a Sunday morning game in London. I hate those games. Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins is kind of the, the factor here right now. What's going to happen with T. Higgins? How healthy is he? He's back to... That is going to determine how high his ceiling goes. Devontae Parker at number 34. I mentioned it with Jalen Waddle with Parker. Safer, but not nearly as much upside. He's not as explosive as Waddle is. Robert Woods at number 35. When I did my rankings, or when I did my start sit video, I listed him as a sit. The problem was is that there was nothing from Sean McVay at that point that basically said, we're going to do what we can to start getting him in. So now I'm moving Robert Woods back to a start, and I'm moving Van Jefferson back to a sit. I don't think we're going to be starting all three of these guys this week. Robert Woods is going to go there for me now. After we have heard finally from McVay, he calls it out. He had not said that. That had not come out when I recorded my start sit video. Now that I know that, we're going to plop Robert Woods right in here. I do think they try to get him the ball a little bit this week. Michael Pittman, I'd like to have him higher, but again, he's not finding the end zone. He's not getting a ton of big plays. Cole Beasley going up against Kansas City. He doesn't have the touchdown upside, but I talked about in the start and sit video. The cornerback that plays in the slot for Kansas City is not very good. I expect a lot of targets for Cole Beasley. Hunter Renfro, he's a guy. Target, 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 target. I mean, he's got a really good connection right now with Derek Carr. Again, they're not big plays that he has, though, so the ceiling isn't as high. Allen Robinson going up against Las Vegas. I mean, they're going to have to be getting the ball out quick against that Las Vegas pass rush. To me, that does doesn't speak a whole lot to the big play for Allen Robinson, but I still got him as a start because if he's got enough volume, he should hit 10 points. Robbie Anderson at number 40. I would like to go higher with him. I think the ceiling is higher, but I haven't seen it, so I can't do that. Tim Patrick, touchdown upside against Pittsburgh this week. Emmanuel Sanders going up, uh, up against KC. A lot of passing, but again, Cole Beasley, I think, is going to get a lot of the work that Sanders has been seeing the last couple of weeks. LaVisca Chenault Jr. going up against Tennessee. I think the big playability with Marvin Jones puts him a little bit higher. LaVisca might be sh safer this week. Henry Ruggs at number 44 going up against Chicago. He's got a little bit more, I mean, he's probably got higher upside than Hunter Renfro, but I don't think he sees the targets that Hunter Renfro sees this week. T. Higgins at number 45, another guy that could go higher, but I don't know the status right now. I don't know how close he is to playing. Jameson Crowder at number 46. Kadarius Toney at number 47. A couple of guys kind of out of nowhere last week, but that were also waiting on certain things. Jamison Crowder, is Elijah Mitchell going to get out of the concussion protocol? Kadarius Toney, is Sterling Shepard going to be able to play? Neither of those things that we know yet. Khalif Raymond at number 48, talked about him as being kind of the go-to for Jared Goff moving forward. Randall Cobb at number 49, touchdown upside this week. I like it, no MVS. He's becoming a lot safer than Big Bob Tunyon. And then Curtis Samuel at number 50. I've got him right here. Um, I don't know if the upside is that great this week, but definitely seeing some 
some of the targets that Logan Thomas had been seeing. A couple of guys with big play potential that are just outside that I have as, as starts. Uh, A.J. Green, I've got him at 52 just because as of right now, kind of looking at it, Kirk's got bigger play potential for me. So does Hopkins. Uh, and because of that, A.J. Green's ceiling is a little bit lower. If we're talking basically only floor, then some of these guys would be coming down the rankings and he would be going up, and that's just why he's right outside of it. Darnell Mooney's just outside of it right now. I still have him listed as a sit because I don't think he's got enough time to be throwing either this week. So just a couple of guys I thought I might get some questions on. Wanted to throw them in there at the very end. Moving on to tight end now. Let's go ahead and jump on over. Travis Kelsey at number one. Obviously, Kelsey and Waller. Those two guys are going to be right there. George Kittle, I think, again, like I said with Debo, I like their ceilings this week because I think Trey Lance is going to focus in on them. Mark Andrews at number four. He's been coming back. He's been looking like his former self. I think that trend continues against Indianapolis. Kyle Pitts at number five. I know you all hate it. I know if you're a Kyle Pitts owner, you don't love it. But he's got so many targets right now, you have to put him up here for his upside. If I'm ranking on upside, it's definitely here because he gets so he's gotten so many targets and so much potential so far this season that at the tight end position, if he gets 10 targets in a game, his chance to be a top five tight end goes through the roof. So that's why he's got to be so high. But again, with how they've been playing, if you don't feel it, if you think somebody else might be safer, then you go with it. And I knock something down behind me. I have no idea what it is, but it doesn't matter because we're feeling it right now. TJ Hawkinson at number six, he's, he's a little bit down right now. He's a little bit down, but the targets are still there for him as well. Mike Gusecki with the move to Jacoby Brissett after Tua went down. Gusecki's targets have been so great. He's played so well the last couple of weeks. Dalton Schultz has a lot of upside for me this week going up against the New York Giants. The Giants allow a lot of fantasy points to tight ends. Dawson Knox going up against Kansas City, kind of the same thing. Kansas City allows a lot of fantasy points to tight ends. Both of these guys have good touchdown upside this week. Anthony Ferksker all the way up to number 10 for me. As of right now, it sounds like A.J. Brown and Julio Jones are both trending towards not playing this week. If that happens, Ferksker's got some decent upside going up against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Zach Ertz going up against Carolina. Carolina. I would have him higher, but I can't because of Dallas Goddard. But like I mentioned, Ertz running 95, running 95% of the time, running a route on passing plays. Tyler Higby at number 12 against Seattle. He's been a little bit safer, but he hasn't had that great of a ceiling, especially if they're going to get Robert Woods more involved. Dallas Goddard hasn't had the volume at number 13, but he does have the touchdown upside. Noah Fant, don't love the matchup this week. If I had to say where is his upside at, even though I have him as a sit, this is where I would have him in terms of upside. So if you're thinking about starting Noah Fant, this is about as high as I think he could go. Hunter Henry at number 15. Love the touchdown upside going against Houston. Houston absolutely awful against the tight ends. I think we see a lot of Hunter Henry uh, and Jonu Smith, who's coming up here in a couple. Evan Ingram, again, six targets last week, caught five of them, but the upside isn't really there because he's used kind of in that short passing game. Cole Komet at number 17 going up against Las Vegas. Again, we got to get the ball out quick, Justin. Justin, you got you got to throw it. If you get it, you got to get rid of it because they're going to be in the backfield really quick. Cole Komet ha helps with that. Janu Smith, again, got him a little bit on the lower end because I think Hunter Henry is safer. Touchdown upside for me. Tyler Conklin at 19. Don't know about Dalvin Cook yet, but yes, Dalvin Cook does affect this a little bit. When Dalvin Cook was out a couple of weeks ago, Tyler Conklin saw a couple of those extra targets that maybe go to Cook. He was kind of used in that passing game the way Cook would have been in some of those short routes. Tyler Conklin was able to work with it. And then Austin Hooper coming in at number 20 for me. I like the touchdown upside this week against the Los Angeles Chargers. The Chargers, uh, you know, kind of kept... Kind of kept, not a whole, but kind of kept Darren Waller in check last week. And because of that, he was only able to really score that touchdown before it really made a fantasy day for him. But there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, my top 50 wide receivers and my top 20 tight ends. Make sure you hit that like button for me and leave some feedback down in the comments. Do you appreciate how I did the rankings this time? Would absolutely love it to hear what you guys think and if I should keep rolling with it. And of course, if you're new here to the Fantasy Headliners, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to get out of here. Great, great seeing you all. Even though I can't, it's just I feel like you all are watching me, right? I feel like I'm here with you. But great having you all in this video. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Have a great week five. And I'll catch you on the next episode of the Fantasy Headliners.